All right. So that's grayscale. Um, last element of overall color accuracy would be the color gamut or the accuracy of the primary and secondary colors, red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Is this uh, the special disk that he loaned us, or is this the consumer version? Okay, which one did you put? <laughs> I think I had uh, the special one in the Denon, so if you're in the Denon, yeah. you're good to go. If you keep going, there should be full field yeah. um, color fields. And we'll put them up, but I have to, we got to tell you which, one, which panels are doing this the most correctly or the closest to the specification in order for you to understand what you're seeing. Um, there we go. It happens to be these two panels here that have the closest uh, accuracy to Rec. 709 with color gamut. Okay. But the, the, the so you'll see the two of these look real similar, right? right. Uh, a lot of other ones look very, very dissimilar, like yeah. these two. For Samsung example. is too hot. Mm -hmm. This is too desaturated. This one I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I actually worked on that, and uh, the red was absolutely uh, impossible for me to, to do anything with, so I left it at the I couldn't, just didn't want to do what I wanted to do. <coughs> so we have, in, in a lot of the sets in the room, we have a tool, um, it's called, we, we refer to it as Color Management System, CMS, um, which gives us a, you know, a feature set to actually adjust each of these colors and try and rein them into where we want them, to the Rec. 709 standard. And that's great. It's a great tool. Uh, there are a number of ways to implement CMS. Some are better than others. But one of the side effects that happens when you start moving color, different colors around, or saturation and hue, um, in order to get your color point where you want it is, that you end up changing the luminance of that color. And yes, there is a reference for the luminance of each color, and it's based on your peak white. Okay, it's a percentage of peak white, depending upon what color it is. The point I'm making, though, is when it's wrong, you can see that. Even if the color measures really accurately, if the luminance is wrong, either di more it's more visible when it's too low than when it's too high, um, the color can measure almost perfectly and look absolutely wrong. And that's what you're seeing right here. I mean, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but these are relatively co close to the spec, but the luminance on this is way high and the right. luminance on this is way low. It's another one of those things where, with the standardized test patterns, it won't pick up on it. You need to have the test patterns to look at the luminance levels of the actual colors going up from zero all the way up to 100% reference to where it needs to be. And what you'll see is a lot of manufacturers, they'll get to one point, then they might dip, then some will go spike at certain percentile levels. But when you get to, like, say, for instance, 75%, which is what calibrators use for, for um, calibration is correct. If you look at 100%, it's wrong. If you look at 25%, it's wrong. 50% may be right, may not be right. So, exactly. What basically everything has to be looked at, at, looked at as a whole. Pictures are not a constant brightness level. They're dynamic. So, everything has to match dynamically and not just statically. Is that a word? <laughs> That's very well yeah. said. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, absolutely. Kevin, could you go back to, you know, just before we're looking at the 601, 709, Joe Kane special pattern. Do you want to go you back just, to it? Well, no, what I'm saying is to to back. tie back to that to CMS. I think a lot of people prior to tonight probably thought, gee, if I've got a team with a good CMS and I've got the right tools and I can dial in the color, in terms of color point and the luminance of the color and get your gamut really spot on. If we have TVs that are not coding 709 correctly, where does that leave us? That well, yeah. it just leaves you with um, a problem of the saturation and where you need to set your color level. But, uh, that's separate from the actual uh, X and Y coordinates of a particular color. No, I, un I understand story. that. But where does it leave you? It leaves you flawed in overall color accuracy. That's why we were discussing it. Um, you, you know, color saturation won't be right. The picture will not be perfect from a color perspective, if you will. Um, I think it's kind of a big problem. I'd like to see it fixed. It should be easily fixable. It should be something that is not a difficult thing for manufacturers to do. It's 
instead of seeing basically, say for instance you had a green shirt, instead of you having that new shirt green color, you have this 20 wash green. You gotta get that correct. And that leaves you as being wrong. What, sorry, Kevin, you were saying it's what's correct? Uh, uh, the color decoding problem. Decoding to 709. That, that's, really, that's a software fix that should well, be. Well, it, it's, we have the math, we have the matrix, all you have to do is get the documentation implemented in the television. That's all. So, so I mean, it's, it's like any other parameter. It's not like we have to reinvent the wheel. We have these references. They've been designed for us in the system. All we have to do is put it in the TV. Exactly. And then we have correct pictures. The table. And that would apply to anything we're talking about. Um, but, you know, again, we here in this room represent 2% of the American public. Let's face it, 98% of the public really doesn't care that much about this stuff. And I think that's why, you know, up until now, this hasn't been an issue for manufacturers because nobody's been complaining about it. Now, for the last X amount of years, we've got people piping up in the press, we've got people like me, we've got people like Dwayne, we've got Robert throwing events like this to say, hey, let's look at this stuff, let's analyze it, let's see what's wrong, what's right, and let's get this information disseminated back into the manufacturing community so that they can do something about it. And largely speaking, if you take the last five years and you look at flagship products from all the majors, they've gotten much better. It's really refreshing. I mean, five years ago I was doing some consulting. Today I'm doing a lot of consulting. And going back to somebody was, I think uh, Bill was talking about, these manufacturers really do care about picture quality because what I do for them is all about picture quality. It's interfacing with their engineers and telling them what they're doing wrong and recommending ways to fix it. And it's all about picture quality. It's, um, so they really do care, they're throwing money at it, time and resources, and as a consequence, th consequence things are getting better and better and better. And you're just going to keep doing what we do to keep that happening. Yeah, that's just it's what Joe Kane does, it's what Joel Silver does, it's what we all do, it's, and it's working. And it's kind of cool. Okay, um, last thing, let's talk about resolution. We, we have Joel talking about it. I thought the lens thing was really interesting. Um, then you look at 720p that was uh, done 12 years ago, the first year that we broadcast it, and it looks fabulous on these 1080p resolution televisions. Um, it isn't the most important component of the picture, but it's certainly important. And motion in resolution in what we do is real important. So we're gonna show you some things that show the TVs and how they handle resolution with motion in the picture. Um, By the way, I think most would agree that we would actually it is on here. Uh, we rather have the a good pixel seven phase. I think if you go the other way, go the other way. Kevin, I was just going to add. Yeah. I think that we'd rather have a good 720p signal than any 1080i signal. Mm. And unfortunately, the broadcast is 1080i at 60 frames. So we're trying to deinterlace that and figure out the puzzle. We're also trying to change the frame rate at the same time. And it's, it's not easy to process and scale all of that. So we'd rather have 720p than 1080i. Yep. So 1080 sounds better, and it is more resolution, but it's interlaced, and we got to figure out how to put that puzzle back together, and we can't process that as accurately as we can up-convert a 720p signal. We can do a lot better in processing that. Yeah, the thing and about progressive, proves that. the thing about progressive that's superior, of course, is vertical resolution is constant, no matter what's going on in the picture. So in 720p, you have 720 lines all the time. Um, I love that. You know, ABC knew what they were doing when they picked 720p. Yeah. Football's got lots of motion mm -hmm. in it. 1080i, you can have as few as 240 lines of vertical resolution, depending how much motion is, is in the picture. But of course, the problem from broadcaster's perspective also is bandwidth and the size of the pipe and what they're dealing with. 1080i is a whole lot easier to deal with in terms of transmission. Right. And I think that's probably why Basically, most broadcasts the alternating are lines that you got to put back together again. Yeah, and it right. just takes up a whole lot less space. Sure than the progressive it's it's 1080p so easy is right. undoable today right. because of the lack of bandwidth in the systems. Um, okay, this is this is a motion. What we're talking about, obviously, static pattern. But this will show you signal processing. 
and it's a pixel phase pattern. If you look closely, it, you got black and white, on one, one pixel black, one white. There should be no artifacts in it. I'm seeing some moray in this. Look at the color and the sharp. We don't um, want to see color. We're only generating it. Black grayscale. and white. We're not generating this colors. This is reasonably good looking. There is some edge going on. Um, none of them do it perfectly, but certainly some of the panels do it better than others. Too bad Robert oh, left because the Sony's doing a decent yeah. job. Although yeah. there is some something going on. I call on it dot crawl. I yeah, that's right. I don't know what to call it either, but that's <laughs> the lack of a better word. That's a good way to describe it. Yeah. This one's got a little bit of color in it. All these there. things we're showing you with test patterns affect the image quality when you're running video. Some to a lesser degree. And this might be to a lesser degree, did you think? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I do. I mean, if this is sort of subtle in the grand scheme of things, but you know Joe, right? He wants a little <laughs> really parameter, perfect. right? That's so right. we're just uh, yeah. using his material because he was gracious enough to give it to us and showing some things that you know, are related to the signal processing. How are these bars moving? No, they're not moving at all. They're not moving at all. No. They look like they're. No. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't be. You really got to make sure. But speaking of moving, let's move on to some motion. <laughs> and I got this to jump. Silicon Optics uh, Blu ray out. Pop it in somewhere. Please. Yeah, I'm done with it, actually. Yeah, because we have to. we got to also. Uh, oh, you know what? That's what you're supposed to do. No, no. 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 motion no. resolution. You know, the way I want to use the, the demo because it puts it out of the Right. You know, you the eye on the right. war, I guess. Right. Right. Sorry, but it's a big old process. You need to keep it away. Yeah. 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 Yeah